everyone and welcome back to my channel. So this is a bit of a different video and ah, I thought I was going to do it. I don't know what that noise was either. I'm really sorry about that but I thought right it's not something I really I'm still getting my head around it basically to be honest I'm just waffling aren't I but I am getting hearing aids and I kind of thought at first there was no point in doing a video like this because you're not getting hearing aids but then I thought actually maybe if you're watching this you are and I wanted to try and A sort of talk about it candidly, B like raise awareness and C also provide a bit of a comfort to someone who is maybe in my position as well. I just hit my bed. You can tell I'm a little bit nervous, can't you? Um, so, a bit of background. If you have um, subscribed to my channel before and you've like followed me for a while, then you probably know all of this. So sorry for repeating myself, but I also wanna sort of fill it in for anyone that's new. So I was, well, I'm 29 now, and I was born 29 years ago with a syndrome called Stickler Syndrome and I have type 3 which is non-ocular Stickler Syndrome and as part of having um, Pierre Raban sequence as part of that and also a clap palette which is part of Pierre Raban sequence and this is very long winded um, I also have some other issues as part of having Stickler Syndrome um, some of those are joint issues so I was diagnosed with premature arthritis when I think I was about 7 years old I used to have orthopaedic shoes um, I don't anymore, still a bit shit in heels though and um, as part of that as well you are prone to have hearing loss and I do have hearing loss now when I was in year I think it was year six I suffered from a burst eardrum in my right ear and no one knows really how it happens and I remember waking up one day having a bit of earache and then I was watching telly and I felt like a trickle and it was bleeding so I don't know if it just burst I don't know how it happened but I had a perforated eardrum and I was going to have surgery to repair the hole but by the time I'd grown a little bit because they wanted to wait until I'd hit puberty and my ears had grown a bit more um it had repaired itself um but initially while they were waiting for that to happen I had a hearing aid only in one ear and um I had it for I would say like a year or so and then I had a hearing review and they said that I actually wasn't hard of hearing enough to have one anymore and it might encourage lazy hearing so they took it off me and that was kind of the end of my hearing journey like with a hearing aid so far and for the most part kids were quite all right about it like I was lucky that it was the tail end of primary school but there were some people that made fun of me. I did sometimes get looks because hearing aids were much bigger back then and I did feel quite self-conscious about it. I also found it quite hard to concentrate sometimes because the levels weren't always right and that sort of thing. So I was quite pleased as you can imagine to start high school and not have to have one and you know be rid of it. And my hearing was fine for a long time but it was only I would say in the past few years I realised that my hearing had started to deteriorate particularly when I had like colds or I was very congested and it was starting to, to knock my confidence I used to do a lot of sort of public speaking particularly in my more recent job where I handed in my maternity well I handed in my notice after my maternity leave back in December and I would do talks and presentations and like you know where you teach people things and then if people would ask me questions I would have to walk right over to them to try and hear and sometimes I would mishear them and sometimes I would feel like this hot wave of shame because I'd be so embarrassed and you know one of my most use words was like what or pardon pardon when I remember my man is or sorry what was that and I was saying it all the time sometimes it would wind up my family because they were sick of like telling me that I needed to get my hearing checked and I wouldn't because I was scared it's really really scared and um it was only really 
having Daisy that sort of reminded me that actually I do have a syndrome and it does have consequences and as we all age things stop working perhaps as well as they used to you know hearing aid isn't just specific to someone with a syndrome or hearing loss from birth it can happen to anyone at any time throughout their lives but I had been hiding from it it was damaging my confidence it was making me sort of avoid public conversation and I always had to turn the telly up a lot and sometimes the telly would be that loud that it would wake Daisy up and it was one of those things where I was just like right I need to do this and Daisy had her hearing tested back in December and her hearing was actually fine um, but the audiologist obviously wanted to know more about Stickler syndrome and Daisy's medical history so I had to fill him in on like you know I'm her mum this is what happened I have it too and that's just sort of the way it is and I mentioned that I think my hearing's going a bit funny to be honest so maybe I should get checked out so after he did Daisy um, and did her test he was like come on let's test you like just quickly and see what your hearing's like and then if I think that you need to go and get checked out properly then I will tell you so it was really spontaneous and really spirit of the moment and very casual as well so I sat there and I did it and he sat me down and told me that I have mild to moderate hearing loss not only in my bad ear but like I thought it was just this ear it was actually in both and I was very upset and I will tell you why um it's not so much about the reactions of other people although that does scare me it was the thought that i am getting worse <laughs> uh, being able to hear is a is an incredible thing and even though you know my hearing at the moment is like it's problematic sometimes it always sounds like people are muttering to me especially mark but he's a mutterer anyway and if you're watching this mark and you're shaking your head you are a mutterer um you are it's really annoying um but i can hear at least i can hear my children laugh i can hear them play i can hear enough to know when to cross the road and it's safe and there's none surprise no surprise traffic coming around the corner I can hear music, I can have conversations, but I am only 29 years old and my hearing has got worse and that worried me a lot because like what happens in another 29 years? Um, I don't think I'll be alive another 29 year, years after that to be honest. I'm not, I'm not sure if I'm going to be like 90 one day or nearly 90, who knows, maybe I will. But I became really frightened of losing my hearing. <laughs> I, I sing and I, I want to be able to sing and music is like a huge part of my life so I don't want to not be able to listen to music and I want to be able to have conversations. I want to tell my kids I love you. I want to hear them say it back to me. I want to hear Mark's laugh and it frightened me and i put off getting referred well i didn't actually it frightened me to the point where actually that day i rang up the hospital but the doctors and asked for a referral but the lady on the phone said because it was near christmas and because it was soon to shut down for christmas there weren't going to be that many appointments available for people like me where it wasn't urgent so it's more for like people like really bad colds like the elderly or the young who have maybe got flu things like that because everybody's poorly at that time of year so she said like call back in the new year and we'll get you sorted so I said yes but then the new year came and I also knew that Daisy's surgery was imminent and we found out the date for her surgery which was Valentine's Day so I thought I don't want to be in and out of hospital for me right now I haven't got the headspace for it so we'll get Daisy's surgery out of the way and then I promised myself I would ring up and get a referral and then a couple of weeks after Daisy had recovered and we were back into sort of like some semblance of a routine, I rang and I got a referral. I thought I was going to have to go in for an appointment but the doctor just said I've got enough on your details here to just book you in for a referral from hospital. And then a few weeks later it came and I needed to ring up and I got a reminder letter because I hadn't rang up and the nerves were setting in. And eventually after holiday I rang and I got my appointment and it was last week on Tuesday and I went and I had a proper test and I have I do have mild to moderate hearing loss so I can talk right now and there's nothing in my ears and 
I can express myself, I have no language or, you know, hearing issues in, in the sense where it's really, really holding me back. But it was quite hard because I kind of thought that maybe, or maybe it was wrong or wasn't too bad. And I'm going to get hearing aids in both ears and I'm going to get them tomorrow. And, um... I am really frightened. I don't really want to be different, to be honest. I've been there. I've had orthopaedic shoes. I've had glasses. I've had hearing aids. I've had speech therapy. And what I'm actually thinking about a lot is that if this has happened to me, there's every likelihood of it happening to Daisy and I don't want it to happen to her. But worse things could happen, couldn't they? And that's what I'm trying to remember. But I think it's also good to say, actually, I am a bit nervous about getting something like this. And it's going to be an adjustment, I think. Just getting used to them. Like she said to me, the audiologist there, that um, what I won't realise or appreciate is how exhausting it is for my brain currently to communicate and listen because I have to concentrate on hearing every single time someone speaks to me I don't just listen if that makes sense so a lot of the time you might find you make a lot of eye contact and really focus on you and a lot of the time you might see me looking at your mouth because I sort of lip read when I'm not sure or a lot of the time you might hear me go sorry what was that and then while you're repeating yourself I go oh yeah and answer because what's actually happened is that my brain is trying to process what you've said and by default I've asked you to repeat yourself while I'm trying to work it out and then actually I process it and then I'm able to respond sometimes you might even hear me see me go yeah yeah and then you look at me like I'm mental because your cat's just died and I've, I've been really enthusiastic and it's actually because I've not heard you and I'm too embarrassed to ask you to say something again so I'm looking forward to that not being the case I'm looking forward to maybe an enhanced quality of life in that sense of being able to enjoy things but I'm also like I am nervous about getting them and I don't want them to hold me back or because I'm being silly and I'm believing a stigma attached to something because the audiologist said it's so funny because all of us you know we have any problems with our eyes we're going at glasses and that's that it's done and then you know people wear glasses for fashion these days with like you know clear lenses in with no like sort of you know different magnification or anything and um it's so accepted now but hearing for some reason it isn't she says it happens all the time some people come to me and they've been struggling for years and years and they go and get them and then you know they slowly adjust and realize there was nothing to be scared of at all so i'm making this video because i want you to know like if you've got hearing loss then you should definitely go and check it out because life is way too short to be saying pardon all the time and, and missing out on things and also just because I, I think it's part of who I am, like I want to tell people that I've got hearing aids and I won't be damn proud of it. Bill actually had a hearing test yesterday as he failed to at school and that was another thing that prompted me because I thought if he needs hearing aids and that is something that he might have got bad hearing from me even though he doesn't have stickler syndrome. I want to be there for my son and I want him to feel like he's not alone and we're going to do this together and we're going to be proud of ourselves. And I went to the hearing test yesterday and I knew within about 30 seconds to a minute that he was going to pass because he was brilliant, concentrating so hard and closing his eyes for me and really, really doing it and he was amazing and I just started crying because I was so proud of him and I was so happy for him because... I didn't want that for him. I don't think you you wish anything on anyone, and it is a, it's an adjustment, isn't it? To just need to to ask for help and realise that you need help, and that part of you doesn't maybe work properly or the way that it should. So now, for now, it is just me. But I've realised that I'm able now to teach my children to be much more sensitive and respectful of other people, to be brave, and also to not be afraid of asking for help. So if you're watching this and you have a problem, and it might not be your ears, it might be something else, and don't be afraid to ask for help and get it sorted. Is life is too short for that? Like you could be just a few weeks away from getting everything sorted and fixed and that's it and you're better so yeah i'm gonna make another video about having my hearing aids like you know when i've got them i can show you them and talk you through what it's like and just as mama finishes the video you wake up from your nap don't you
yeah so on that note i am gonna go i'm gonna love you and leave you and give this one lots of cuddles and attention and i will see you really really soon but yeah um thank you for watching I appreciate that this video isn't for everyone but there's much more to me than just like motherhood or weight loss or things that I'm into and I wanted to tell every single part of my life on here and be really sort of honest about it as well so yes thank you so much for watching have a lovely day and I will see you soon